question on Jeopardy. Nobody, nobody gets the final question. This That's guy good. does. And it was it's a very easy question. The answer, the answer was Breaking Bad. Yeah. No wonder why you got the final. Not answer. one person on that show on got Jeopardy. it right. Two people guessed yeah. wrong, and the other one didn't have a guess at all. And I'm thinking, I, while I'm, while I'm reading the question, I'm saying, that's the easiest fucking Final Jeopardy question right. I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. And the question was, what, what, in what hit uh, drama series did the uh, song Crystal Blue, Blue Persuasion play, blah, blah, blah. If you watch Breaking Bad, it was obvious. That was how they ended the fucking uh, series with that song. Uh, so you got the, and nobody got it. Nobody got None it. None of the three got Somebody it. They said Sopranos, which was a decent guess. Somebody said Touched by an Angel. Touched by an Angel, I know, was one of them. Sopranos was, was like you said. Uh, was my was, favorite of all time. And I'm starting a new show. I started it today. Uh huh. It's called True Detective. It's an HBO show. What are you looking for? I'm trying to get this on. It was on, but mm. I guess it shut off. Okay. Yeah, it's called True Detective on HBO. It's got Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrelson. Right. And it's, I've only seen one episode, but it's. Seems like it's gonna be a good one. Gonna be a good one. Seems like yeah. Be good. I got the whole season downloaded. I'm kind of pissed that we have to do the show because I'm yeah. really into it. They left you with a nice little hook at the end, and I'm like, oh man, I want to put the next one on, but yeah, it got last. Uh, uh, there was not enough time. It's gonna be a uh, busy night when we go off the air here yeah. tonight. Um, are you just gonna leave this shit here? What are we doing? I uh, I thought we were gonna have all this set up. What happened? You were I doing set everything setup. up. All you had to do was put a stupid fake mic stand up. Our you. mic stand. You didn't even do it it's for looks. I know. Yeah. It literally has no point, no purpose. But so we're back here. It's Wednesday. We uh, we promised. That's why I gave up. We promised the people. Yes. That uh, we gave them the tribute show last night, which turned out to be a production disaster. Yeah. Uh, well, even when we thought it was fixed, it was still not fixed. I love how we're centered here. Yeah. Everything's supposed to be centered, and you've got John way over here. I didn't put him over there. You put him over there. Right. But but look at our. Can you see on the screen? We look all right. It's this little stuff here, none of which we use anymore. I don't know what any of it's Let's there. Let's get for. rid of it. Then. Oh, what? Let's go on. Anyways, we uh, we promised the people that yes. we were going to be here tonight because uh, we did a, a tribute to the Ultimate Warrior last night. Uh, talked, you know, about his life and career and uh, and and everything else. And um, then we're going <coughs> tonight. We're basically here to run down Monday Night Raw from this past Monday night. Boy, it is weird, man. You see the chat room traffic and you see the uh, the stream traffic, and you're like, wow, these people are programmed on Tuesday night. Yeah, because it's to get every here. Tuesday will be like a little shaky. We'll see the numbers and be like, that's it. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's like, damn. Usually, it's a little bit more than that. And yeah. then without fail, two minutes to one minute till. Bam! They right. fucking all flow. Well, it's, at the same it, time. it's it's like okay when it's like when, TV. You turn when Monday Night Raw, on. right, yeah. right. When Monday Night Raw comes on on Monday night, right? You don't have Channel Twenty Eight or the USA Network. I don't on. have my TV on except for one time a week, and that's from eight till eleven on right. Monday night. And the only time I turn it on, I turn it on at like seven fifty nine, right, right, right before right. it starts. And then you flip over to uh, to the USA Network, and yeah. uh, you you tune in for uh, for Raw. I think people do the same thing with WZR TV. Eight o'clock Tuesday night, There's load up the internet browser and, and go with it. You there's know? a lot of examples of, of like I always think it's just me it's me and my buddy talking and there's a camera yeah, on us but yeah, so what the fuck do people care but they really I dig know. it you got guys that are sending you uh they drew pictures of an army tank or some shit that you put the other day I'm like man they're drawing like all this professional artwork shit and you know you know what the guys is? looking up to their big screen TVs and watching us like a big UFC right. or a big Super Bowl like it's just me and Ryan talking about wrestling for you know what time. the uh, you know what the latest one was today on uh, on one of the websites that I report for you know how you always get you get hate mail and you get yeah. hate emails are people. you gonna bring up what I think you're bringing up. People telling you to die. What and, you told me and, earlier? Yeah. Holy shit. Why not? It's not. It's not true. It's funny. But, but people put this. I had up. to ask you that. And that's kind of scary. But yeah. What do you mean? I said, is that a true story? <laughs> no. They 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 came and they I they was fucking with they you. made a uh, <laughs> they made a post on one of the websites and it says uh, it's, what did, what did it say? Ryan Clark. Sucks penis. Oh, he likes prescription pills yeah, and penis. Right. He likes penis and, and prescription pills yeah. is what he said. And then he says, uh, inside that was the, headline. the post, yeah, that yeah. was the headline. And then inside the post, he says, uh, what did he say? I used to sell Ryan Oxys, and he, and he got a debt that went up to over $3,000. So 
he came to me and he said, listen, I don't have the $3,000 to give you for what I owe you, so would it be okay if I stuck my dick in your ass? And this person agreed. It's a legitimate question. This person agreed to it, and I stuck my dick into his ass, and I didn't like it because the ass wasn't tight enough. The, ass, the, the asshole wasn't yeah. tight enough. So, so some people have been there before. And this was a post on the main website, right? It goes up on the main website, and it gets like uh, 50 comments. And they're, you gotta be kidding me! You uh, are you see Ryan? Ryan, you sick fuck! What the fuck? Are you <laughs> People blah, blah, are believing blah, blah. it. You, oh, That's awesome. I said, what That's the? Awesome. Fuck, I remember man. once I googled our name or, or the WZR name or something, and there was this fucking old forum thread that everybody chatted on. Yo, Boone and Clark are gay together. <laughs> yeah, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, Who? And, and they had all these details, like specific details. They're like, there's not only crazy, crazy it's like crazy I can see stuff. a general broad lie like that. Boone and Clark are right. gay together because people know we've roomed room together and stuff like that before. But right. where'd they come up with all these intricate details? Oh, they, all their favorite sorts this, of uh, shit. Their they favorite color is blue. Yeah, and they love to eat at Wendy's and they love to watch this shit and like they love this fucking movie. I'm like, well, what? Where do they come up with this it's shit? It's crazy <laughs> that people take the time to hey, go listen, and create. I mean, you made it. If you, they always say, I if, guess, if you got I haters, so. that means you're somebody. Right? I guess so. Man. Otherwise, why would anybody care? I mean, this was like a three-paragraph type deal, dude. Where this guy, you know, he put it all in the one paragraph, but it was. I gotta I mean, check it out. Now. On and on and on and on and on. I said, "What the fuck is going on here?" But, anyways, uh, the <coughs> no dick and ass and no gayness and any of that. But uh, uh, we're gonna be here for the next. I, I would say hour and a half because it's a very very busy. Uh, it's gonna be a busy night in the websites. So today's been busy. All day today and uh, yesterday, Ultimate Warrior's wife uh, came out, issued a statement yeah. to WWE.com earlier today. A very, very well-written statement, um, you know, reflecting on the life and said that, he, you know, he was, WWE and all that. he was the ultimate companion over 20 years and they've always had a battle, um, you know, and I guess they had a ring in their house and they used to wrestle together this that and the other thing so it was a really really well uh well written piece it's up on www.com and at wzronline.com as well so if you haven't read that yet check it out it's from uh, dana warrior is uh is what they call her dana warrior that was their legal name that was their yeah. le his legal name well, right. when you marry you take your last name <clears throat> yeah i know i know i thought warrior was his first name <coughs> so he's still jim helwig was uh well, i know that but when he changed name. to warrior so <coughs> did he change it to warrior helwig or jim warrior i guess jim warrior. i don't know jim warrior didn't he That's do funny, it out of could... spite uh, <laughs> against we talked WWE. about it last night right. on the show. Yeah, right. he did it because they were trying to stop him because they own the intellectual property rights to the, to right. the name. And he was right. trying to market himself with this comic and other stuff outside. Yeah. And they're like, you can't use a name. We own the name. And so he, he like, went out right, and said, I'm going gonna, gonna to change my, my birth name. So And that's what he did. Um, so anyways, we're, uh, we're going to talk Monday Night Raw. From this past Monday Which night, Ultimate show? Warrior tribute show, I was surprised. Ah, I can't say I was was all that surprised. The uh, the rating for the uh, the post WrestleMania show. I mean, it's post WrestleMania Monday Night Raw, so you're always going to pop a big rating. Yeah. Coming off the biggest show of the year, three point seven last week came to a three point three this week, so it was quite the drop, man. Yeah, but it, the by, viewership by was point. all right. I viewership mean, was okay. Yeah, they right. had over four and a half million for every hour, right? or the last hour was like four point three seven or some shit. Right. But right. I mean, they were you know right around there, so. Pretty good, you know. Yeah, it uh, it wasn't so bad. I mean, still a three point three. You know, you guys I mean, think that, that was, and it's going to drop again next week. A lot of people stayed around another week to watch the Warrior tribute because mm -hmm. you know it was a big story and everybody right. knew. Well, and they hyped it up too. Yeah, yeah, they advertised yeah. the hell out of it. So uh, yeah. next week, I think it's going to go back to three flat. You know, somewhere around there. Three o, three one, yeah. somewhere around there. You know, I mean, there was a time just a couple of months ago they were at a two eight, two nine. You know, two right, nine. There you I think go. Right guy was hooking us up in ninety three. Hellwig legally changed his name to the mononym Warrior. I mean, he only had one name. Mm, okay. So. Mm. Uh, live chat room on and in progress, wzronline.com. No fucking dot com. Slash chat, wzronline.com. Are we okay? Chat. Can we ask him, are we, is the video okay? Are we moving around all right this week? Or, or Should be good to go. I mean, put the archive up last night and there were all sorts yeah. of issues with the, uh, the, the voices matching up with the video and, and everything it was else. Out of so sync, the yeah. audio and the, uh, and the video. But, um, anyways, the, uh, the archives is up if you missed it last night. 
my suggestion to you guys would be to just kind of put it down in the back. Don't watch it. Just kind of listen Last to it. Show. Yeah, yeah, that's what right. I did. Because I, I like to re-listen to hear like to self critique you know I try, right. like it's not like a gimmick i said it on facebook last night i was real drunk i went on a big rant because oh, all the feedback Did you? in a comment so i didn't make a whole post out of it but in a comment two comments actually everybody's feedback they're trying to break stories in comments like yo this thing just happened on wb.com blah, blah. i'm like guys that doesn't help I, I was like it's not a catchphrase when i say i get it all the time it's not a catchphrase when i say tell us what you liked we'll do more of it tell us what you don't like we'll do less of it i say that for a reason because I read the feedback thread and I'm like, all right, if people like something, I'll do more of it. Uh, if they don't want, I'll try and stay away from it. And they were not even commenting on the show. They're just like, yo, this post just came out on WWE.com. This video just came out here. And I'm like, well, how does that help? What does that have to do with anything? And it's not like we're not going to get it, right? Like, of course. I'm, I'm, I'm here all day. Get this I'm here all yeah. day. So I'm going left and right to, to multiple places. Yeah. And, there's and email and, and Twitter and there's the phones and the text. How and, stressed out was I when all that stuff was coming out last night? Chris Jericho on the network. Sting on the network. Um... What else? The raw script. Oh, the raw script came out. Right. We've got another script that we're going to put up on the website for you guys. Um, What's already up? I put. I yelled through the wall. I said it's up now. I haven't done the post about it yet. Two minutes after I told you, I put it up. If you go to uh, wzronline.com slash photos, we've got the uh, the pre-show script. Um, No, no, no. Monday Night Raw. Maybe you're talking about something else. Then I'm telling you, the to-do list came out. It's the to-do list for the pre-show. No, it was a bunch of shit. Like, yo, we need this done for the WWE inbox. We need to interview these people for .com. We need to do this for... That was all stuff. pre-show stuff. All the .com stuff, all the... Uh, it wasn't pre-show stuff, but yeah, it was another script. And then, All right, well, the script that I read that I'm going to put up, okay. if, if, so you, if you, you don't have it, else too, yeah. is the backstage interviews for WWE.com, which they tape during the pre-show. Yeah. No, this was for their YouTube shit, their YouTube series and their dot and their official website and all that stuff. Did it have the footprint on it? No. Oh. All right. Yeah, something different. Well, the uh, <laughs> photos we're going to put up. Uh, basically what happened, the reason that this script leaked out online is because somebody dropped it. Somebody that had the script dropped it on the ground and a fan Wound up picking it up and putting it on the internet. You know, uh, one of the photos that we have has a big footprint where somebody stepped over it or stepped on top of it, and somebody else picked it up and said, "Son of a bitch, I got the fucking script for tonight's RAW," and then uploaded it online. It just occurred to me as we're talking about it: an easy <laughs> fix for this, an easy solution for this problem. As soon as you hand out the scripts, make everybody sign them. That there way, you know, when the like pictures right. get scanned and put online, if somebody signatures with it, like that son of a bitch didn't protect his script. Yeah, but that was an accident. All you, you got to do, saying, most people, they leak it. They, you know, they show this person or give it to that person. Dude, or whatever. somebody signs it. Somebody scans the images and they take Photoshop and they blur out whose signature it is. You're not. It's you're not going to be able to. To tell or do different colored uh, papers out. for each person's script. This person they're gonna a do blue script. a this green, a blue, a pink. <laughs> you yeah, right. yeah, right in the hell. It's not, dude. You've got 40, 50 talents that are backstage that are all getting a script. The, the you've got all the agents. The you've got all the agents. When I I used to go down in Albany, and all the talents would carry around a Manila Manila yeah. envelope uh, with the script in it. And I'll then on the wall board, on the wall board backstage, yeah, the there's big, a big script. Yeah. All these well, talents, the all these talents are handed a script. They go into their locker room. They read their lines. Everything that needs to be done. Everything that they need. Yeah, they to get know. individual shits to tell them. Here's your promo, or here's your. Well, that's true. Yeah, that, they don't get the true. whole fucking show. I don't think. Well, then how did somebody find because the entire yeah, the agents script and the writers that was on and the ground? Those guys get them, I'm sure. So it wouldn't be hard to do. So it would have been somebody papers. like that, right? Yeah, right. There's I, not as many. Well, anyways, but uh, I'm just trying to help 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 our brothers out here. Here's a way you can stop the leaks. Although yeah, I like them, you know. And it's Photoshop, funny how Photoshop's a great thing. I'm just you're right. You're right. You know. I didn't think of that. But yeah. usually one script leaks and then. Fucking snowballs and all these others. Because remember the oh, Royal Rumble stuff leaks, right? The Royal Rumble script came out a couple months ago, and then all of a sudden, here's the other Royal Rumble from ten years ago. Here's a Royal, here's a Raw from right. six years ago. Here's right. this show. That. So they're out there. It's very interesting. If you guys went through and uh, and read that script, I mean, some of the stuff that is I that is listed it. in there. Yeah, you should go through it, it's man. Um, I looked at a bullet good. point very highlight good. that somebody. 
posted. But it's uh, very good stuff. I mean, some of the lines are word for word, and then you go back to Randy Orton's promo on Raw, and you're like, wow, exactly word for word. Even what a guy as big as Orton doesn't have creative license. Even a guy. Maybe Paul some Heyman, guys prefer it. Some uh, guys for, prefer give me a promo. Paul Heyman had like a brief, it was, you know, a couple of uh, sentences, and then everything else seemed like it was on the fly, unless he had another script. That I showed him, you know, you're going to say this, this, this. Clearly, this, Heyman this, gets right. to at least. Of course. Of even course. if they give him a script, he doesn't Heyman's stick good to enough. Yeah, that he needs there's guys they points. trust. And, right. and, and Vince McMahon will even say certain guys earn the, the right to, to have. Oh, absolutely. Their own and and Heyman's, say. Heyman's yeah. one of those guys. That, well, yeah, you, you can you, trust you, that he's going to fucking. It just hand, hand, hand the guy pull up points. I need you to let him go. Hit this mark, right. hit this point, you know, sell this match or whatever. Right. And then just do the rest, you know, do it, you know. Yeah. Um, so Sting appeared on the WWE Network last night. A lot of people, I mean, all over my Facebook page. Oh, my God. It's a big deal. Sting just appeared on the WWE Network. Well, here's the deal, though. I mean, listen, there were some reports that Sting had signed with WWE. I put it up uh, last Thursday that Sting, or last Thursday, yeah, WrestleMania during Access. Somewhere it was during the weekend, I think, or Thursday. It's about yeah. last, I think it was last Thursday <coughs> that Sting had signed with WWE. It turns out that uh, the contract, he's got the contract in his hands, yeah. um, and it doesn't appear that there's been any snags in negotiations. Yeah, well, so here's how I understand. Sting's it. got the contract. All he needs to do is fax the thing yeah. back, and it's gonna happen. A lot of it's, it's elementary because they agreed to terms. That was basically right. the story, you know. And we heard that he actually signed, which was you know a conflict compared to what actually was going on. But like bottom line is they hammered out all the details. Here's what you're getting paid. Here's what you're working. Here's what we need you to do. Can you do this? Can you do that? Yeah, I can do that. I can do this. Can we move that up a little bit? Can we get a little more money here? Can I do a little less? Right. They agreed to terms. So it's a pretty much a, it's a, a given, a foregone conclusion. He's gonna sign it, send it back because right. they've already right, right. agreed to you know the deal. So, yeah, the fact that he hasn't officially signed his contract doesn't mean anything. A lot of guys are like, well, from now on then, until I see him, I don't trust none of your guys' stories. If he's not on my TV... And he's no, just- and, and that's what people are going to say. Listen, it's a given. Sting's going to be in WWE. And the fact that he appeared on the WWE Network, uh, they taped that segment with him and Chris Jericho um, about a week or two ago. Probably, I'm guessing. Well, what did he say on the network? Did he did he did he say something about Warrior? Because if he said something about Warrior, and I downloaded that show, I just haven't watched it yet. It was like the first of the four Warrior tributes. It was mainly matches, and then they had interviews in between and stuff. But um, as I understood it, it was a tribute show. So wouldn't it have been recorded after he died? It would have had to have been recorded within the last couple of days. They recorded it a week ago. I don't know. I said, did he say? Oh, I didn't watch. I don't um, know. But uh, if it was, you know, something warrior related, then they would have taped it in the last uh, in the last couple. I need that on. I need that on. You, uh, you don't need the volume. I do. It's an important text that just came in. We'll leave the screen on. Uh, <coughs> And anyways, <laughs> anyways, um, so yeah, Sting uh, to WWE, it's official. Um, and who knows? Uh, today's Thursday. Uh, the contract today's may have been Thursday. today's Wednesday. No. Uh, contract <laughs> may have been signed and already faxed back, and it's done deal now. Uh, but we haven't heard that. <clears throat> yeah. But either way, it's done deal. Nothing has has changed. Um, as He's far coming. as you know, Sting's coming to WWE. Um, Go live chat room, WZROnline.com slash chat, the official website of WZR TV Tuesdays. WZROnline.com. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as well. TV what? T- well, it's normally TV All Tuesdays. Right. Uh, TV Wednesdays. Today, yeah. WZR TV Wednesdays. So it's not Thursday or Tuesday, it's Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> WZROnline.com. We are on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as well. Go to Facebook.com slash WZRArmy, YouTube.com slash WZRArchive, and we're on Twitter as well. Go to WZROnline.com, top navigation bar, drop down menu, social media tab. All the links to Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube are right there. WZROnline.com, the official home of WZR TV Wednesdays. And Tuesdays. And Tuesdays. Never Thursdays. Never Thursdays. Yeah. Um, so, this is what we're going to do, man. We're going to talk uh, Monday Night Raw for the rest of our numero uno. Ranjit. That's one. Has helped us Ranjit. Out. He said, Sting basically shared a memory of Warrior saying, Warrior would put tuna and orange juice in a blender and say, quote unquote, I got my protein and vitamin C all in one. But it sounds that, yeah, like he talked about after he passed. So, that must have been a real reason. Tuna and an orange juice in a blender. Yeah. 
You get your you get your protein from the tuna. You get your vitamin C from the OJ. You know that there's some health nuts out there, dude. That they take raw eggs, put them into a cup. Yeah. And gulp that shit. Well, see, you don't watch movies. That's a very famous scene from the first Rocky movie. My Could you do that? Could you time. take a raw egg, put it into a cup, and gulp it? Could I? Yes. Yeah. Would I like to? No. You wouldn't gag. I you can, can do get it. that. I can get to it. Yeah, I think so. Although I, I, I do have a. Weak Let me go stomach. get you one raw egg and do it. I don't right want to do it. I just said I don't want to do All it. Right. Yeah. It'd make for good, uh, good radio, yeah, or do good it. TV. I can't do it. I yeah. gag. I gag. I might too. I don't know. Maybe I would. I would. I get it up there and then. But this way, somebody I puts get some it. money on the line, or fucking a hot chick puts up sex, or something that I really want. I don't want. have any cash on me, yeah. do I? Well, I got money anyway, so don't worry about that, but yeah. <laughs> I gotta file this. I give, you, uh, I give you $5. I'm not doing it. $10. I don't want to do it. $10. I'm not doing $10. it. $10. Don't get a raw egg. <laughs> for $10? For any, no dollars. I'll do it for the people. I'll try. My man. All right. My man. You give me that trash can, too, because I might do it. <laughs> But check out the official website, like he said, WZRonline.com. Uh, check out the chat room. It's on in progress right now. Lots of people in there having a good time. WZRonline.com slash chat. My buddy's out there getting an egg. I guess some kind of impromptu challenge was just laid out, and I'm going to attempt to drink an egg. Um, I'm starting to regret this as the as the seconds tick away here on the clock. I'm picturing the uh, official cup full of egg. Oh Christ! And there it is too. So I guess it's too late to back. All right, roll. I didn't say two. You said one. Well, I might try it too. All right, if, yeah. As long as I don't get sick. Give me that trash can. All right. Hey, what are you going first? Yeah. I'll go first. You want me to go first? Mm, go ahead. All right. Take your egg. There's an egg. All right. It's a real egg. You egg. You it's, a re- it's a real egg. Well, I'm going to gag. I know I'm going to gag. Don't, this is going to mean that way when you start, man. All right. I don't think I can crack it. You might have to do that. I can get it. All right. All right. Oh, that looks terrible, man. How oh, much it's nasty. Shit. Oh, fucking. All right. He had to get one of them cups, by the way. It's one of those cups that have the double pane, so there's liquid. I thought all of that was where I had to drink, but it's down here. That's still. Oh, like it's water. not. Right. Damn. Do you stir or you just... I don't know, down? man. Drink it. Let me get a chaser ready. All right. With, uh, chase with beer. beer. Now, if I do it, don't screw me out of this and say, well, I'm not doing it. I'm a man of my word. All right. You just got to close your eyes and do it, right? You ready? Let's see. Can they see it? In Bottoms there? up. It's an egg in there. <coughs> they watch you crack it and dump it. Yeah. Ooh, fuck <laughs> oh, man. I wish I would have went yeah, first. Get, now I'm like really getting too much imagery in my head here. I'm seeing more than I should have. I oh, got it. Oh, I oh. got it. I got it. Is it bad? <laughs> Boom! Crack it up, man. Get me in there. I don't want to eat shells. You got to get the the yellow part. Gets kind of stuck. Do you chew it or do you just swallow it I right there? I swallow it. Ooh, fucking shit. Go, come on. I'll get it over. Okay, get it. We got a show to do anyway. Okay. Once I'm in the hospital from this. There's your egg. You drank all yours, right? Crack. I don't have some of yours left. In there. Oh, all it's right. in there. Ooh, man. Get it. Show, show them. There's an egg. Eggs in there. All right. That wasn't that bad Ain't at all. Trash. To with you. I don't know. You got to get the yellow part down. The yeah. big, the, the yucky part so we did it so you can do it so people that do that it's kind of uneventful man I wish leaves, you an after, leaves. leaves an aftertaste yeah 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 well, you, want, you want another one no okay <laughs> <laughs> mm. I am hungry though I'm gonna get some to eat after try that at home man try that at home I, some people do it on a daily basis they wake up in the morning time crack open the eggs gulp done yeah anyways look how excited he got he ate an egg <laughs> it wasn't that big of a deal. That was very anticlimactic. I was, <laughs> somebody would have puked or gagged or st- fucking teared up or something. That would have been more entertaining. Mm. Okay, so uh, uh, wzronline.com slash chat. wzronline.com slash chat. Get in there. Lots and lots of people in there as true. always tonight. Somebody, it was Brian Clems. I don't know how the fuck you say that last name. Brian K. in the chat room says... People normally do like five or six at a time. Oh, do they? And Rocky, yeah, he cracked right. like a fucking half dozen eggs. And drank are you there. supposed to stir the egg around and, and make it into a, or do you drink the the egg, 
The, the I, chunk of the way he did it was he cracked, him, he cracked a bunch of eggs, drank the fuckers down, wiped his mouth, started running in the middle of the morning, doing his road work. Yuck. Anyways, uh, Monday Night Raw from this past Monday night. Doing the Lex Luger point with the thumb and everything. What'd you think? Top to bottom. I, I'm having a hard time remembering it, to be honest with you. You got the report? That's yeah, what I I'm looking for. That was your cue. Monday Night you Raw. Chat, bop, bop, bop. Bop. All right, but uh, from what I remember <coughs> of... I wasn't, I mean, it's almost like, it, it bugs me because the week before, obviously you're not going to have a crowd that hot every week and the atmosphere really makes or breaks a show sometimes, or at least can enhance it or make it worse, depending on how they act. Right. But the booking too, if you look at the post-Mania Raw, they're capable when they want to, just like the Chicago Raw, you know, there's plenty of evidence that when they really want to, they can put on a fucking kick-ass show, so it makes me wonder... Well, why don't they just do that every week and try and top themselves every week? Well, that was so the we best do. thing back in the Monday Night War era where you yeah, had they WCW. Had no they had no choice. What but is that? It's, uh, they're, they're here. That was the oh, text. Okay. I've got to, uh, got to, got to give them something. Um, but, uh, they, they had no choice for WCW. Well, she didn't know. It's Wednesday night. Uh, they had no choice but to do, you know, WCW was on one channel. Monday Night Raw was on the other channel. And it came to the point where WWE had to put on a great show every single week. Same thing like you said. When they go to Chicago, when they go to New York City, when they when they are, they've got to put yeah, on. Yeah, when their backs against the wall, or when they really know people are expecting it, they give a great show. So they're capable right. of doing it. Right. So why not do it every week? Why do they do weeks where they're like, let's just do some I thought boring bullshit? To, to open up Monday Night Raw this week, I thought the tribute that they did was awesome, bro. Yeah. Um, we know that Vince was really, really shaken up um, from the Warriors passing. Uh, they opened it up. I had put up on Facebook, you know, over the weekend that they were going to do a 10 bell salute. And I basically said, don't That's be obvious. that guy. Yeah. Don't be that guy. That, you know, when they're doing the 10 bell salute, somebody yells, Oh, warrior! Yeah. Warrior! We love you, warrior! Something that. like that. You know what I mean? Anything. any Anything and stupid, yeah. you know? Um, so they opened it up. They uh, they shot directly live to the arena. Jerry Lawler was uh, in the ring. They had all the talents on stage. Vince McMahon was up there, Triple H, Stephanie. A lot of guys <laughs> the, either the face paint or the t-shirts or something warrior related. Yeah, yeah. Something. And, and, you know, the Usos had the uh, the, had the, the mask paint, or the, yeah. the, uh, the face paint that they had. Um, so then, you know, they aired a video package for Warrior, which was a, a well done. Really good. Really Very well emotional, produced. Yeah. Right, right. Especially the kids when they showed the kids yeah. at the Hall of Fame and the wife sitting in the front row. Uh, then they aired a RIP graphic uh, on screen, shot back live to the arena, and did the 10 bell salute. Correct. Thank God everybody was respectful. You heard yes, a couple, yeah. very, very, you know, very few people. Uh, they did the, uh, the 10 bell salute. Looked like Natalia, really. Really got choked up. Um, I, I, I have a hard time belt. catching quick things like that because I'm doing the play by play. Natalia was choked up, man. Cody Rhodes as well was another one that uh, they were they were really really choked up over it. And uh, following that, they uh, they aired a or they they played the Ultimate Warriors theme music. Yeah. Now before Raw went live, we got two different reports from uh, fans saying that as soon as the Ultimate Warriors music hit, and this was also in the Raw script as well, that Justin Roberts was out there to say, when you guys hear the Ultimate Music Warrior after the tribute package... The Ultimate you, Music Warrior? The Ultimate Warrior music yeah. after the tribute package, put your masks on. And everybody oh, yeah, you that, that walked into the arena was given a Warrior mask to put on. So after the whole tribute... And that's where, when they played Warriors music, they panned around to the live crowd, and everybody had the masks on. Not everybody, because I did. A lot of that, people did, and there was a lot, a of, lot people of people did. who didn't. But there was right. a ton of people who did. Yes, but like, I want to know what asshole can't just put on a fucking mask and show some respect. And oh, I know, I know. Let me just stupid, uh, let me but, uh, get, get these guys out. Yeah. Finish up by our continual raw. <laughs> All right. Hello. From there, we were told uh, during Monday Night Raw after the uh, Warriors stuff, we were told that we were going to begin. A um, an intercontinental how, how would you even call it an intercontinental title number one contender tournament the longest name for a tournament in the history of the world but uh and we were gonna get a bunch of first round matches all of which were gonna take place tonight the first of which was going to be uh, Rob Van Dam and Alberto Del Rio right. and uh, yeah for the uh, for the IC uh, title 
They kind of spoiled that with the. Uh, well, they didn't the expect the uh, the raw script to leak out, but uh, I see title. It looks like a uh, Cesaro. They originally had plans to do Biggie and Christian. Christian yeah. is not clear to return. He's concussed. Concussed. Yeah. Um, so it looks like Cesaro. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Extreme Rules. Cesaro. I mean. Paul Heyman now with Cesaro. Cesaro sure. wins the tournament. What about the title at the pay per view? I would give it to him. Yeah. I think so. I would. Yeah. I think so. Do I think got... they will? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with that. I, I mean, think if um, they don't, then that's really a dumb way to get him started. You know what I mean? Like they did with Curtis actually started him off real hot. They had him not beating, but having like draws, or he wouldn't lose to guys like with Triple, uh, H, Triple H, and H guys right? Like that. Right. And then, well, a couple weeks later, he was fucking a job. You know, he was a job. Speaking of Triple H, uh, we're going to have a report uh, after we go off the air here tonight. Triple H um, suffered some sort of injury at, uh, at WrestleMania 30. <coughs> I believe it was a knee injury, but we're going to have more on that after we go off the air. Uh, that's obviously the not reason. that bad, because he's still taking spears no, on right. Raw. And, uh, right, and that's the reason that he had the, the uh, I believe it was a knee brace, uh, the night after WrestleMania on uh, I'm on NL Raw. So a lot of people were, were kind of wondering why he's got the knee brace on. Is he selling an injury? He was uh, he was banged up at WrestleMania. But um, RVD beat Del Rio in the tournament match and uh, advanced. And then it seemed like Del Rio was taken out of the tournament. Um, well, it was they funny because in the script, he was noted as a guy that was injured. Right. I saw that. Right, right. right. But he worked. So. AJ Lee as well was... Uh, to be determined or or injured, yeah, uh, AJ has for time off. Right? AJ Lee's taking uh, taking some time off. The reason for that is is unknown. Um, she got engaged to Punk. That's what I'm saying. She's got a wedding coming up. I but mean, that, normally you don't do them that quick exactly. after exactly. So. Normally, you plan a wedding for you know eight months well, to they, a year. Didn't they just buy a house? Or she moved in with. She just moved in with them. She moved to uh, Chicago. So maybe right. she wants to just spend some time. Who the fuck? I don't know. It, it may be yeah. something along those lines. But uh, normally it takes a while to plan a wedding, and like you said, you don't do it right away. Mm-hmm. And she only started wearing the engagement ring a couple of weeks ago. Now who knows? Punk could have proposed months ago, and the wedding's coming up. But I mean, when somebody's wearing the wedding ring, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, so we'll, we'll have to. I'm pretty uh, sure we'd know about that though if they're getting married right. soon. Right. You know. Um. What else? There was a uh, backstage segment. It was uh, Dave Batista and Randy Orton. This was a uh, a cool well, you get segment, here. right? No, this was the first one. They did another one after the commercial, and that's this one right here. But, okay. Uh, yeah, the All first right. one they were just talking. We didn't get to hear him. You want to take it? Go ahead. Um, Caller, you're live on WZR TV. What's up? How you doing? This is, I'm actually watching the show right now. What's going on, man? Very much, man. Um, I just um first time. I, I just came across your shirt this night right now. My first time caller. Sweet man, appreciate Glad it. Have you? Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm calling for is Ryan, and, Ryan Clark, and Matt Boone. It is. It is, man. As us. Hey, it's good, man. It's good to hear you. Um, so let's see. Um, nothing much. I just want to call. Just, I love the uh, huge, huge pro wrestling fan, and I uh, just want to call. Just. We're, we're talking about Raw. What did you think of this week's Raw? Did you enjoy the show? Uh, this week's Raw, um, a top huge for Evolution coming back. Um, however, I did notice that um, the crowd in Alabama seemed to not know what was going on. Yeah, you know, well, and and not only that, but you're you're coming off you're coming off Raw the previous week in you know where was it uh, New Orleans, right? They with uh, with WrestleMania, yeah. right? A great hot crowd like that, and then you get well, to, that's an international. You crowd. get to those guys. They buy the, right. they come in from all over the world for Mania, and then they and they the buy Raw. Mania Raw yeah. SmackDown tickets, things Sometimes like that. Sometimes SmackDown, it's but I, you get exactly. you, it's it's funny because you get to different parts of the country. Like you go to Chicago, you go to New York City, you go to Boston, you go to places like that, and you get these crowds that are just off the fucking chain, yeah, yeah. right? And then you get these yeah, other New York crowds. crowds are good. I'm from New York, so I love I love the New York crowds. Yeah. Yeah, we. Uh, I mean, that's part of the reason I go down. Uh, I take the train down to the uh, the Hammerstein Ballroom when Ring of Honor is in town, just because that crowd in mm-hmm. New York City is awesome. Anything Madison Square Garden, Hammerstein Ballroom for Ring of Honor, TNA. Uh, I know WWE runs across the street at Madison Square Garden, Absolutely. but yeah, it's just, it's an awesome, awesome crowd, you know. Uh, and then you get to areas like I don't know Omaha, Nebraska, and in, in, in Dothan, <laughs> Alabama, right, yeah. places like that. And you're like, wah, 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 wah you know. <laughs> I, I think to them, it's like with those smaller cities, it's like um, they feel the need. I, I, I guess to them, it's like something to do. Where it's like with like a, like a Chicago or a New York crowd, it's like. To them, it's like it's like a whatever, but to those smaller cities, I feel like they're just happy just to have the show there. They well, are. 
Thanks they for the are. call, by the way. And yeah, and I would agree. You would think the smaller cities that we were just joking about would be the most passionate, most vocal, because they want them to come back. Because it's so rare that they get to be there live. <laughs> right. You figure they'd be like fucking uh, right. you know, energetic. Whereas Chicago, New York guys that get them all the time are probably like, right. oh, we've seen some crazy. Like you, you just listed off yesterday when we were doing the Warrior Tribute Show. You said, I'm there for Heyman shoot on Vince. Those that had on him, that thing. I'm there for the beer truck. I'm there for fuck. You're like at that all Rumble, happened in Albany, Royal man. Rumble 92 with Flair winning and all that. Like, you're there for some sh- crazy shit. So you would think that when they come with a show that isn't amazing, right. you wouldn't be, the crowd wouldn't be as hot because they've seen so much in person already that it's like, if it ain't off the charts awesome, they're going to be like, well, what the fuck? I've seen shit better than it. Right. But they're still fucking, they're yeah. hot as hell. Yeah. You know? The uh, the crowd was kind of uh, dead on Monday. I, I mean, the caller was, uh, was right on that. Um, oh, my God. How corny. <laughs> there was a Toys R Us ad, okay? Yeah. That featured Seamus and... Seamus and... and Big E. Big E. Yeah. Okay? Um, my God, dude. They're in a Toys R Us store, right? And, and the idea here is that fans are supposed to go into Toys R Us. They're supposed to buy an action well, figure. Well, for a sweepstakes. They're holding something in a contest. They're supposed to buy an action figure and take a photo oh, with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Then they take the photo and they post it to the Instagram accounts of WWE yeah. and Toys R Us. So you had Big E and Sheamus in the store, you know, and the mother was with her kid. And the mother says, are, are you guys eligible? Because, you know, that's you and you're holding your yeah. own action figure. So and then they switched it. God, it was the corniest goddamn promo. It I've really is like the... Like, uh, like the uh, 80s boom period or early 90s stuff where it was really, really geared toward children. And it's yeah. just like that again. And the only difference is I was a kid during <coughs> the 80s boom period. It would have been 90s. funny if you were a kid, well, right? Well, I would have enjoyed it. Yeah, it would have been like, cool, even here's my yeah, rest yeah. of the real life, you know, superheroes, yeah. whatever the fuck. But when you're 30 years old and you're watching this, you're like, my God. Seamus half naked in the in the Toys R Us store, Big E too. Right and, too. Like these guys on. walk around in their gear all the time. What are they walking to Toys R Us in their gear half naked? Yeah. Normally there's a sign on the door that says must wear t shirt. Yeah, no, sh- t- no shirt, no <laughs> shoes, no service. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what it is, man. Alright, we had uh Ryback Baxel so against well, this the uh, we got to the uh, the, the oh. backstage segment, which was uh that's Steph- it was are. the authority, Stephanie oh. Triple H, with Batista and Orton. Long story short, that Barker just threw me way off. Um, Long story short, it was Triple H, Batista backstage. Triple H was with basically Randy Orton. trying to convince the two that uh, they need to focus on the Shield, take them out, whatever the fuck. Right. And Batista and Orton basically said, "Hey, that's not our problem. That's we want the WWE yeah, title. We don't care. But that's your right. problem." You know? And then later yeah. in the night, Stephanie you know, said she had an idea here. I think. And then later in the night, you know. that was weird, man. And we'll talk about that when we get back to the segment. But Stephanie McMahon had an idea. idea. What was the idea? Was her idea to contact the Shield and say, "Hey, go attack Randy Orton and Batista." So that, well, I mean, I guess we're going to find out, but yeah, I would right. assume, I mean, that would be the obvious assumption is that she's playing both sides against the middle. She's playing both sides double against agent exactly, work. And, yeah, exactly. We had uh, Ryback so against the Rhodes Brothers. The tag match. Whatever. Yeah. We had uh, Paige against Alicia Fox. I'm telling you, I told the people on Monday night during the, uh, the Raw audio that I had up, Alicia Fox is good. She's she was big. doing good in that one, yeah. She and is she's one of the best divas on the road. Fucking hot, man. She's hot, right? God damn, yeah, man. Prettiest eyes and all that shit. Yeah. She's got the red hair, too, right? I the still dark maintain that Paige ain't the hottest fucking thing I've ever seen. But I think Paige is hot. She's my not boss was showing me pictures. I made this big statement last week's regular show that yeah. not only is she not hot, she's like she's pretty, but she ain't hot. Because to me, there's a big difference between pretty and hot. She's hot. She's hot. I think I was wrong on that one. Because he was showing hot. me, my boss was showing me, uh, Mike was showing me some bikini photos of her. Yeah. Yeah. Up here, you know. You like? I like. <laughs> Up here, mm, yeah. you know. But down there, is, yeah. and she, it was one of them from behind. She's a great ass. I, th- I think you throw a tan on her, man, and maybe you'll look at it. I, I don't, Well, you're saying the face. I like, I like the dark face. hair, dark eyes, and all that. But, yeah, I don't like the chicks that are real pale white. Yeah. I'm not into the goth yeah. thing that much. But even right. then, she her face and all that. You know, yeah. I'm no prize either, so I don't know what the fuck I, I'm talking about. I disagree. Decent match. Paige, 
is being booked somewhat of an underdog. Like she was getting the shit kicked out of her the whole right. time, and then pulled off the uh, the victory in the end. And they're trying to show that her title win wasn't a fluke. Well, that and like yeah, it's not before. you can't just walk up into WWE and then your first day win the title and all of a sudden you're killing everybody. No, right. you gotta. It takes time, you know. So well, and the angle that they did with AJ Lee the week before, you know, she said, "I'm not ready." I'm not ready. So maybe yeah. the idea here is... She may not have the confidence or something, and she's not up to... She gets her ass kicked the entire match and then comes back because like she's not Claire, ready. would right. find a way to win all the time, yeah. Right, right. We had the Usos against Randy Orton and Dave Batista. This is where, you know, in the backstage segment, and I said the people on the Raw audio, I said, well, the idea here is you know that the Shield is going to come out and attack Randy Orton and Batista... Due to the fact that you need to get Orton, Batista, and Triple H all aligned together on against the same, page, against the the same group of guys because they were going to do Evolution <laughs> versus The Shield. We know that Triple H already had a problem with The Shield. Now The Shield needs to create a problem with Randy Orton and Batista so that they can get everybody together. So I've that's what happened to Two here. major thoughts to this. And I wrote about both of them in my latest column, eWrestlingNews.com, <laughs> cheap plug, but... Uh, and it's like, Daniel Bryan gets his moment, finally gets the title, he's finally anointed the guy. But is he really the guy if at the very next pay-per-view, the real main event is the Shield against Evolution? Because no matter, it looks like they're doing Daniel Bryan versus Mass Kane. They are going to do that. And that's right. going to be the, his match. And that's right. not going to be viewed as a more important match than the Shield Evolution. Well, and the other thing is, the guys that are positioned ahead of Daniel Bryan, the Shield Evolution, just happen to be the three guys that he beat. To have his moment, Triple H in the opener at WrestleMania, mm-hmm. and then Batista and Orton in the main right. event. Those three guys that he already beat are now still up here, and he's down there. Right. Let me go one. Uh, let lame. me go. Let me go one further. All right. Uh, Daniel Bryan, a guy <coughs> that at WrestleMania wins the WWE title. Granted, he appeared the night after on Monday Night Raw. Right. What about this? So Daniel Bryan's kind of. I mean, clearly. The extreme rules selling point, the reason that they're trying to get people to buy the pay-per-view, is based off Evolution versus The Shield. Yeah. It's not based off Daniel Bryan That's versus the real Daniel. main event. Even if, the real Bryan goes, event. even if Bryan goes on last, like WrestleMania 18 right. was the example I used. Shut their fucking dogs up. Uh, Chris Jericho Triple H for the Undisputed title was the real main event right. as far as the last match, but the true main event was The Rock and Hulk Hogan. Exactly. That was the main exactly. event, even though it didn't go on last. But... Listen, so you've got Daniel Bryan, who, you know, should be in the main event, should be the guy that all the momentum is going to, right? He's not. You can tell. He's if not. WWE really wants somebody to be the guy, they get behind him and they try and make him what the about, guy. They're not trying this? to make him the guy. What about this? Already. You're going to have Brock Lesnar defeat The Undertaker and the streak at WrestleMania. And then go Then away. <laughs> you're going to take him off TV. And I said that. Uh, the week after WrestleMania, I said, dude, I think Brock Lesnar, they're taking him off TV. That's part of the reason that they're putting Cesaro with Heyman as Brock's not going to be around. Yeah. So you're going to have Brock Lesnar with all this momentum. He breaks the streak, this, that, and the other thing. And then you take him off TV, and there's talk that Lesnar isn't coming back until SummerSlam. Yeah. So all of that at WrestleMania, you end the streak, you make Brock Lesnar look like a beast. The following night... You take him off TV. And well, not the following us. night. He was on Raw the yeah. following night um, and didn't say anything hey, for him to cut that promo. promo. Yeah. Uh, but then we're not going to see him well, until SummerSlam. And then that... Daniel Bryan wins the title, and you're going to put him in a second-rate match at the Extreme Yeah, Wars. that part what? sucked. But the Brock Lesnar thing is it, Underta- it wasn't more of we need <coughs> – we're going to use Undertaker Street to get Brock Lesnar more over. That wasn't no. the mindset. The right. mindset was Taker's done – on the way out, Vince McMahon made the call. He's ending the streak. He, so it, it was almost consequential that Lesnar happened to be the guy that he was wrestling. because And it should have been Daniel Bryan because if, if that was the mindset, this is my last match, guys, do you want to end the streak or do you want me to end undefeated hmm. and the, the call was going to be made to end the streak, then they should have let him because he requested Daniel Bryan, Undertaker himself. Now, if that was going to be his guy and no matter who he's facing, he's going to let that streak end. Mm-hmm then it would have actually been very beneficial because that would have fucking skyrocketed Daniel Bryan. And, you know what I mean? So then, And he would have still been around, lock Brock Lesnar. They have him a guy that's a part-timer. They make the call to end the streak knowing full well that unless we can convince this guy, which if they're going to end the streak and give it to him, they should have done this beforehand. But we got to either convince this guy 
all right, here's some more money. Can you work some extra fucking shows for us now that we gave you this, you know, this right, big push right. or this big rub? Uh, Let yeah. me ask you, that, coming out of WrestleMania 30, yeah. if you were to pick two guys coming out of WrestleMania 30 to really push in the coming weeks on Daniel Monday. Daniel Bryan, Brock Lesnar. Daniel Bryan, uh, Brock Lesnar, dude. Yeah. And then... And Cesaro. And then... Uh, and Cesaro. Daniel Bryan... Granted, the guy's on his honeymoon. He's yeah. going to come back, and they're going to continue pushing him through, you know, give him a week off. But this is this is after WrestleMania. If there's ever a time to really continue to push Daniel Bryan, it's right now. If there's ever a time to really run with Brock Lesnar and, and you know, go with him. I can't not, disagree with you, man. Go with him. And, and Brock Lesnar wasn't on Raw this past week. Daniel Bryan wasn't on Raw this past week. The prior week, uh, Daniel Bryan, they used Daniel Bryan the night after WrestleMania yeah. well. Uh, but Brock Lesnar just kind of stood there along with Paul Hayes. Well, that's what he does. He's the, he's the I, I silent did. monster that has this guy, you know, controlling him like, then, like a Frankenstein. Then or take whatever. him off TV and we're not going to hear about the str- I mean, Paul Heyman brought it up this past week on, on Raw. You know, my client wanted me to tell you that he's the guy that broke the streak, this, that, and the other thing, but just feel like they should be there on, on, on television, you know? <laughs> um, we had the IC title tar- tournament uh, continued. It was uh, Cesaro against uh, Mark Henry. This is where uh, Paul Heyman walked out without the music, right? Yeah, I guess Said that's that his gimmick. He doesn't have music my, now. My client wanted me to tell you, you know, he broke well, the streak. Well, Cesaro came to the ring, too, with no music. No music, I know. Match. I know. Yeah, so he doesn't even have music. Right. Um, we had Cesaro picked up the uh, the win there. Triple H uh, had Brad Maddox backstage to uh, deliver a message to the Shield. Uh, they're going to be in the main event tonight, and yeah. their opponents will be announced later. Yeah, turned out he that said, there were. Do you want me to tell opponents. them who their opponents are? And they said no. Right. So yeah, turned out that there were eleven opponents yeah. later in the night. <laughs> oh, we had heel on the roster. Yeah. Yeah, way better all those guys. We had uh, Alexander Rusev against uh, Xavier, Woods. Xavier Woods. By the way, Alexander Rusev um, at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. We're going to have a report coming up after we go off the air here tonight. There are plans right now for Rusev to come out at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view and squash somebody being uh, time permitted. That seems to be um, his gimmick, like because uh, in this match he just squashed him. Right. And right. last week I think he debuted, right? And he squashed whoever that was. I forget. Right. But yeah, I guess his gimmick is that he's a killer that you know you can't even just hurt. Destroys people. Yeah. Right. They're scheduled to do that same thing at uh, Extreme Atlanta? Rules. Lana. Uh, Lana. 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 Fuck me, dude. Lana's <laughs> hot, bro. I, and I didn't think she was all that hot when I first saw her because she's so covered up. But Jesus Christ, somebody right. was posting some bikini photos on Facebook. I said, gee, oh, damn. You know what? I mean, I mean, listen, dude. Ben Boone says Paige, ah, Lena, ah. I didn't say you Lena, the, ah. You show this man some bikini photos. Hot damn. Oh, that's true. Paige bikini too. Yeah. Paige bikini, Lena bikini. Oh, listen, damn. The Paige thing. I don't know what's going on. Like, she, I guess just maybe her ring gear is not good. I don't know. She didn't look that hot to me. And then I saw the bikini Paige photos. I'm like, oh, she's working around. with that. Okay. Right. Lena is just so covered up that you can't yeah. really see what's going on there. All you see right. is this, and, and that's nice, but you can't right. say someone smoking. It's nice. Yeah, but her body is ridiculous. Uh, we had the uh, the IC title uh, attorney continued. It was uh, Sheamus against uh, Jack Swagger. Uh, Sheamus advanced uh, here. Damian Sandow, um, he comes out, right? He cuts a promo, and then they go to the break. They come back. He's still cutting a promo. He's Smart. getting a job or treatment, Damian Sandow. What the fuck right? did he do? I know. He was on a rise when we started the year, and now he's like a... Speaking, speaking of job or treatment, and this is a completely different promotion, but uh, we're going to have an article once again when we go off the air here tonight. Giving you guys a bunch of breaking... Not breaking news, but some exclusive stuff here Scoops. on uh, WZR. Uh, Austin Aries, the reason uh, you haven't seen him as of late, or you've seen him, and he's been kind of a down spiral in uh, TNA. Aries, and we don't know the exact reason for it, Aries had a big blow-up backstage, yelling and screaming and everything else just a couple of weeks ago at the Impact tapings. Not this past Impact tapings, the one before that, and uh, they weren't happy. They were not happy about the big blow-up that he had backstage, and uh, it's kind of 
in the doghouse, being being punished. So we're gonna have more on that after we uh, we go off the air here tonight. So yeah, Sandow kept talking shit, and then Big Show came out and basically let him talk some more shit, and then knocked him out and left. That was it. That was it, right? <laughs> and you knew how clear was that, right? Big Show comes down to the ring, and Sandow saying nobody's gonna do anything about it. Blah 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 blah. Um, you knew Big Show's just standing there, and you knew that Big Show wasn't gonna say a word. He was just gonna let him rant and rant and rant, and then of course. Boom, yeah. knock out punch. I'm just saying it was clearly obvious exactly. what was gonna happen. And here's another. Are obvious you okay? Thing. Wake up tonight. I'm not feeling like good today. Guess, but another good. Was thought. it the egg? <laughs> no, I haven't been feeling before uh, that. But uh, uh, another clear thing was that we're about to fucking rag on John Cena a bit because look what's next. Oh God. Yeah. John Cena's comedy. Where is he? Oh, he's gone. All right, good. You want John? Get him out of here. John. No, let's keep him over there, it. right? Oh man, John. Uh, John started out uh, with he was kind of serious at first, and then he immediately yeah, he was jumped into the. the, the he was comedy. goofy at first, and then got serious when when Bray said, "Oh, it's all fun and games, or it's all jokes with you." And he's, "Oh, you want to get serious?" That's what it was. Uh, That's seriously, what it was. I beat your ass at WrestleMania. God, and yeah. he put the photos up on yeah, screen. He's talking about right MySpace. Up. Does he not know that MySpace is like yesterday's news? We're talking Facebook and Twitter now. Where does MySpace come from? When did he say MySpace? He was talking about, I found these pictures when I did a search on MySpace, is what he kept saying. Well, it was probably he found these old photos from back in the day. Old photos would have been on MySpace. Not that people don't post I think old you're overthinking photos. it, but maybe. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it's, and, then, and then just to me, this is the wrong kind of character to do that against the, the Bray Wyatt, the Wyatt family. Maybe that was a Vince these... McMahon thing where Vince, maybe in a creative meeting or something, said MySpace. They think MySpace. that shit's funny. I know. I know oh, let's, put, let's Photoshop his head on a baby's body. Oh, there's your daughter or something like but that. But you know what? The crowd, and I, I said to the people on the audio stream, I said the I crowd. I would like disagree with you, man. I said the crowd is laughing at this. What, who? The, I would love to meet. And if, if you're over. Anybody laughing, right? Listen, anybody laughing, okay. If you're under 18 years old, I guess legally I can't, but. Anybody under 10, I'll be like, all right, it's probably funny to a kid. What did I put up on my Anybody page? over, I don't know, but anybody over 18, I'd like to see. If they were laughing, I'd like to just pull them aside and be like, are you serious? Did you really think that was funny? On my what Facebook page. What the fuck's page? wrong with you? I don't. You, Asshole. You, you just brought that up. But yeah. I, on my Facebook page on Monday night, I said, if you are over the age of 10 Did years old. Did you really old, say that? I said, if you are over the age of 10 years old and you found that funny, you got issues, man. You've got the mentality. That's what I used to I'd normally you've see that stuff. I didn't see that one. I said, you've got the mentality of, of a five-year-old, man. And the crowd it was, was a lot laughing. Of people laughing. A lot of people were laughing at that. And I'm thinking, you know what? Maybe it's something in the water and, and, in Birmingham. And if, if, if WWE hears the crowd laughing at that, that gives them a reason the next time that they want to do a segment like that, and they laugh to last do more time. Of it, they man. laugh last time, so let's let's do it again. Oh, dude, it was so corny. Dude, then, it was cringeworthy to so watch. The whole thing man. led up to basically Cena, Cena, the guy that already beat him, challenging right. him to a steel cage match at Extreme Rules. Right. Now the whole point of the cage match, as I understand it, from growing up and being a wrestling fan, is a feud keeps going and going and going and going, and a big blow off. Finally, you lock these fuckers in a cage. Mm-hmm. Especially when there's guys interfering, you put them in the cage. Nobody can interfere. You guys are locked in this cage, and the guy. And usually, it's designed to get the baby face to finally get his win because nobody can help the heels uh, cheat him. He already beat him, right. and then oh, he challenges right them to a steel cage. It was completely backwards. It didn't but make any sense. I guess whatsoever. they need an extreme gimmick match at a, a pay per view like Extreme Rules. So extreme put rules. them in a cage. Right, right. It's a lot of gimmick matches at the at the pay per view. We had the uh, the corporate Kane. Uh, he was backstage yeah. with uh, and a mixed tag Stephanie match first with Fandango and Layla oh, against right. Emma and Santino. And I guess you know this was the, be- the beginning of uh, or maybe they started on SmackDown. Summer Rae's off TV. She's uh, out with the Miz. The Miz is off TV as well. They're filming uh, the Marine Force, so that's the reason yeah. that uh, she's off. Is it the Marine Force? I know it was a movie. I didn't know what it was. But all right, so his new uh, chick is Layla, and she's actually yes. a professional dancer. Her has professional dance experience. So I guess they thought that Ever was a good Ever seen fit. Layla in a bikini? No, and I can't even picture what she looks like in general, Layla. Layla? Yeah. Oh, come on, man. I, I can't picture her. She's the um, uh, Latino. Oh, Lay Cool. So it was her and Michelle McCool, and now I'm trying to picture her. I can picture Michelle McCool. You don't know who Layla is? I know who she is, but I can't picture her. I, I don't know her that well. I, she was guy who, she one of those, a big booty, bro. Does she? She was with one, one of those ones that came along when I wasn't really watching that much, mm. so... All right. Uh, so, corporate came backstage. Stephanie McMahon. I missed this. Stephanie McMahon's back there, uh, basically saying to Kane, 
what the hell happened to you? What happened to the old cane? The cane that took nothing, took no shit from, from anybody, Same thing they right? did with Orton for the last several months. Where's the Viper? Right. What happened where's, to that guy? Where's the monster yeah. in, in Kane? So uh, Kane eventually winds up flipping out. Uh, he pans over to the left or the right, and there's the mask. Yeah. And uh, he grabs the mask, and the mask is returning. He actually returned on main event last night with the uh, with the mask on the network. Did he? So, yeah. so his big return is the mask guy was on main event? He's back as the monster. He's back as, you know, the monster is back, and he's going to face Daniel Bryan. So if Triple H can't defeat Daniel Bryan, they're going to bring back the monster Kane and maybe he can do it yeah. at extreme so rules. So if the president like can't win, let's see if the vice president can. You know what the funny thing is? The Once extreme again, rules, backwards. The extreme rules, I know, it's completely yeah. backwards. Should have been Kane first, rules, then Daniel Bryan. Extreme Rules Charlie. poster from last year showed Kane in the mask, mm-hmm. right? It's like a faded poster yeah. where Kane's on one side with a mask, and all of a sudden Kane's back at Extreme Rules with... Uh, with the mask again. We had uh, the IC title tournament continued. <coughs> this time it was Bad News Barrett against Dolph Ziggler. Uh, Bad News Barrett picked up the uh, the win here. Uh, crowd was into it at the end. They're into Barrett. Right? I thought it was just because like, we were talking uh, to the caller a minute ago that the day after WrestleMania, Raw always has that international mix of crowd. Right. You know, so you figure a bunch of fucking Europeans are going to love, you know, Wade Barrett. Right. But he's over everywhere, apparently. I mean, if he's over in fucking Alabama, then he's over. Well, I think they like the gimmick where he pops up and he's like, I've yeah. got some bad news. Can I have some decorum, please? It's like the, uh, it's like the uh, Zeb Coulter and Jack Swagger where people chant, we the people. Yes. You know what I mean? And they're supposed to be a heel tag team. It's like Bad News Barrett pops up and I'm like, yeah, my dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where the fuck is it? What are you looking for? Bad News Barrett? What do you got a Bad News on? Yeah, I got his theme song over here. There it is. They have a little thing that starts on. God save the queen. Yeah. <laughs> Bad News Barrett. Barrett. So he advances. <laughs> he advances, and then we so have... I guess the, uh, there's a long shot chance if we're doing Vegas odds here. Obviously, Cesaro's the favorite in the tournament, but if there's somebody else that they say, oh, maybe we might give it to maybe, this guy, maybe bad news. Barrett yeah. would be that guy. Yeah, no doubt. And then uh, the main event, dude, we had... Uh, they announced uh, Sheamus against Batista for uh, WWE SmackDown coming up this Friday. Spoilers are on the website, WZROnline.com. And then the main event, so... The shield comes out and they're ready to find out who their opponents are. Um so the shield uh, is in the ring and uh, they're ready to find out who they are facing on Raw. Alberto Del Rio comes out first, Jack Swagger, Titus O'Neil, Fondango, Ryback, Bad News Barrett comes MB. back out. 3MB came yeah. out. Justin Roberts Alexander is basically... Rusev. Rusev came out. Justin Roberts just kept announcing more and more and more people. Yeah. Uh, coming up, basically all the heels, like uh, yes. like you said earlier. So, we have that, and uh, let me see. Triple H, uh, Dave Batista, and Randy Orton eventually came out. Uh, so, Evolution is back. What happened earlier in the night, right? It yep. got them all together. Evolution had attacked uh, you know, the Shield during their match, or the Shield had attacked Dave Batista and Randy Orton. So they all became united at the end of Raw, and we had a big segment. It was Evolution against the Shield on Raw. Triple H uh, grabbed the microphone oh. here, right? Yes. And then he got, um, what uh, was it? He, uh, he had a pedigree. trying to uh, Roman Reigns was trying to crawl back into the ring as Triple H grabbed the microphone. Uh, Triple H uh, begged Roman Reigns to crawl towards him, um, and then caught him with a pedigree. Was a pedigree yeah. right? and then, uh, a pedigree. stood over him and talked a bunch of shit. Basically, don't believe in evolution yes. instead of believe in, first, uh, in yeah. issue. So that was that. That was Monday Night Raw, top to bottom. <laughs> Turn it down. What do you think? I. I yeah. To be honest with you, man, it was the Evolution show. There was no Daniel Bryan on, uh, on Raw, which I thought kind of took a lot of that lot out of it. Paul Heyman caught a, caught a brief promo about Lesnar and then transitioned into uh, Cesaro. But overall, I didn't think it was all that good. Um, it was a B-plus player cast. No, it was B-minus, probably a B-minus, C. 
somewhere around there. C plus or B minus for uh, Monday Night Raw. So that was it. That was Monday Night Raw, and uh, we need to take a commercial break. On the flip side, we're gonna come back. We're gonna take your live phone calls. Uh, we'll do a couple of rapid fire questions, and then we're gonna try to get out of here in about a half an hour from now. Um, a lot of news, like I said, coming up on the websites. Get to our live chat room. WZRonline.com Motherfucking.com Slash chat WZRonline.com Slash chat We'll be back on the flip side Taking you a live phone calls And rapid fire Facebook.com Slash Mindfuck WZR For Matt Moon That's me What am I doing this for? We'll be back <laughs> TV Wednesdays I'm Ryan Clark, he's Matt Boone. We're going to be taking your rapid fire questions and live phone calls for about the next 30 minutes here on WZR TV. We're going to get out, uh, we're going to bounce out of here a little bit earlier tonight because uh, we've got a lot of stuff that we've got to put up on the websites. We're running behind before we came on here tonight and um, going to try to get that caught up before it gets too late. Uh, I'd rather not be here until 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning uh, tonight. So we're going to try to get uh, some of that caught up. Uh, we put the uh, rapid fire segment up on Facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WZR. We've got a couple of them already. So we're just going to run through them. Also, if you guys want to call us up live uh, right now, 518-712-3070. 518-712-3070. Hello, or am I on the air? 518-712-3070. Jason Hansen, loyal diehard WZR TV oh, member. My question is to both Ryan and Matt, and also to everybody in the chat room. Do you think it would be fitting to have the WCR Hall of Fame, the most loyal, helpful member of the Army, can be inducted yearly prior to WrestleMania? I like it, man. I yeah. mean, we would have to set something up where, you know, what type of categories would there be? Chat moderators and fan of the year this and a whole lot, like host, a whole lot of of host of the year. Host of the year. It'd be a cool thing to do. You don't want to do. I gotta tell of the year, you something. Every year you, you are want. the most sourest son of a bitch tonight. <laughs> Nothing is. These guys are trying to get involved more. The WZR you, Hall of Fame. The WZR Hall of Fame. Why are you so sour? You're so down on everything. You're in a bad mood tonight, I'm man. I'm not feeling that good, but yeah, I, I, I can I, tell. I, but that's a cool. Uh, listen. Host of the year, fan of the year, chat moderator of the year. You don't want to do host of the year. You, you want to do. You got to lose every year to me, and you're not going to like that. That's going to get you down, and you're going to be the down one. I've got a poll that we can put up on WZRonline.com. Yeah. We can take a poll. We can do fan of the year. We can do nominations. It would be something cool to do. I think it would be more of... You're going to do all the work, right? It's only a poll. I think it's a great idea. It's only a poll. <clears throat> we could do one per week. Next week, we're going to reveal the fan of the year. Next week, we're going to reveal the host of the I think year. you got to limit it. That's kind of insulting, though, because you can't put... We have hundreds of people. You would have listen. people nominate the people. Okay, and then that's the, something. The, the, the most yeah, names. Yeah, say, because then like, you're going to be insulted if you're not one of the nominees. Like, man, I listen. I love... I love Oh, right, so absolutely. Chat. We would have the fans nominate, and then we would now do categories. All right. It would only be four, or, shape. four or five categories that we would do. Like I said, host of the year, fan of the year, something like that. And then we could do it, but it would be like year-end awards, not after WrestleMania, something like that. We would do it yearly. Bring that back up at the uh, at the end of the year, there if you, you remember. Johnny Morgan says, if The Undertaker is 100% done and isn't going to be at WrestleMania 31, who does WWE... Who does WWE fall back on as Sting's WrestleMania opponent? It's a good question. I don't know. You think The Undertaker's done? I think he's done. The way they played it, it would be kind of stupid to come back after you lose, finally. Like, what are you going to do? Go 22-1? and 21-2? and two? It is. It is. There's really weird. nothing there. You know? Yeah. Uh, and the way Why they played it up. He gets hurt every time. Why go get hurt if it's not, like, this big significant thing anymore? They killed it. It's the hard. way they the way they played it up at uh, at WrestleMania 30 as well was kind of a this is it you know uh, he wound up losing the match and he did that slow walk to the back and you know the announcers were yeah, just kind of stood up and cheered this is the last right. time we might ever see right <laughs> um let's see somebody put a link Ryan to Ellis. a Layla photo I wanted to check her out yeah she's hot look at them legs. All right, she's hot. Ryan Ennis, uh, how do magnets work? 
How do magnets work? I don't know. How does the sun shine? I mean, they work. They they, they draw something. And gravity. I'll take it. Gravity. Well, Alaska it says, good question, I guess. How do magnets work? What the fuck? Does that have to do with anything? Gravity. Paul Velasquez is prior to WrestleMania 30. Ryan was constantly saying, I guarantee you the WWE Network will crash during WrestleMania. I wanted to bring this up. I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, Come back to this. Let's get this caller real quick. Caller, you're on the air. What's going on? What's on your mind? Hello? What's going on? Clock and booing. It's Rago. Rago, what's up? How do magnets work? (laughs) How do magnets work, man? Uh, Serious question. Now, what do you guys think, instead of it being Cesaro who wins, what if Swagger was to interfere and set up a match between those two at Extreme Rules and then have Barrett challenge for the title? Because Cesaro kind of has a push with winning the trophy and having Heyman, and right now that works even more than having the IC title. Yeah, but Swagger's not in the tournament. He got eliminated, right? So what you're saying he should cost Cesaro the title? Who wins the title then? Oh, 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 so Big E says... Barrett, Barrett. Barrett fight, uh, faces Big E at pay-per-view. You know, he's got a good point because Cesaro, Cesaro's with Heyman number one, and Cesaro just won the Andre and the Battle Royale, right? I think and Cesaro, were the next, in the next round, those two are facing each other. Cesaro and Sheamus. So you would have Swagger yeah, come out. So where Swagger, yeah, Swagger could come in and interfere. Swagger would come in, in match. Right. Swagger would come in and interfere in that match. That would set up Swagger versus Cesaro, which they've wanted to do and they've been teasing for months now. Yeah, but uh, how many brackets we, are there? Because if Sheamus and Cesaro are the next two, then whoever wins that, aren't they in the finals? No, Barrett. Well, that's what he's saying. That Swagger so would Barrett come down. Him? Swagger would come down. And would cost Cesaro the Get match. Yes. Sheamus would advance. Wade Barrett is in another match with who? Del Rio? Is it Del Rio? No. Van Dam beat him, so it's either I Van Dam. So it would be it, it would be it'd be bad news Barrett against Van Dam, correct? I think that's what it is. I don't know. You've got it would be it listen, you would have I like the idea, yeah, yeah. You would you would have Cesaro against uh Cesaro against Sheamus. Jack Swagger would come down cost Cesaro the match. That would set up Jack Swagger against Cesaro at Extreme Rules. As far as Bad News Barrett winning the tournament, Bad News Barrett's in a match with RVD. I believe Bad News Barrett would win okay, that here match. We go. It's Cesaro and RVD next. Barrett and Sheamus. Barrett and Sheamus. Oh, see. So then he would still... Alright, so he costs Cesaro the match. Still RVD right. advances, then Barrett advances. Barrett beats RVD. Barrett, Barrett beats goes, RVD okay, and, and Barrett goes on. I like that. Cesaro Swagger with that. And that makes more sense. because that, that does make more sense. That seems to be the has got the too. You got Cesaro and Heyman against Swagger and Coulter. That makes more sense. That, that that does make a lot of sense. Not only that, but like you said, man, Cesaro won the Andre the, the, uh, the Giant Battle Royal. So he's already got that in addition to Paul Heyman. So Cesaro really doesn't, doesn't need, need to win. Yeah, and if he gets screwed, it sets up right. something and he doesn't lose right. face. Yeah, I like that. I, I like, like that a lot. I like, it. Yeah. I like that. Thanks for the call, Rog Out. All right, uh, 518-712-3070. So Paul Velasquez, yes, right? He was saying, prior to WrestleMania 30, Ryan was constantly saying, I guarantee you the WWE Network will crash during WrestleMania and I would did. say it every Tuesday night on WZR-TV. The WWE Network was smooth during WrestleMania, only a small audio issue during the pre-show, which they fixed almost immediately. So... Will Ryan Clark admit he was wrong? Listen, I said week after week, I said I guarantee you the night after WrestleMania, all these reports are going to come up on the website. Listen, Paul, you know me better than that, man. If I make a mistake on the website, like Sting, I had said Sting had signed with WWE. He didn't sign. Always go back and issue a correction on the website. So I've always done it. I've been doing this for 15 years. It's the right thing to do. If you make a mistake, you go back and you correct it. You issue a correction and an apology on the website. But that was I a said I said that the day after WrestleMania, you're going to hear all these reports online, the WWE Network streaming issues, it crashed, this, that, and the other thing. And all the reports that we got were the network ran smooth. I mean, I there got some no, that said it did. There were problems. But very, 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 little, yeah. very few people had problems, and it's probably their computer. They've got probably. real slow, laggy computers. Or but their Apple TV or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Yeah, I was wrong, man. I mean, for the most part, everybody said that the network ran smooth. So I look you right in the camera. They got me, man, and they prove. And listen, I'm, I'm happy. Give it up for WWE, man, because it off. when they had the problems with the NXT arrival special, <laughs> I thought WrestleMania, they've yeah, got no they fucking chance. They've got no chance, and they proved me wrong. They so figured it out. Kudos to WWE. Uh, Anthony Remy, 
Do you think WWE should give the Divas matches more time? Oh, man. No. <laughs> <coughs> no, man. I mean, the Divas matches are pretty much a, uh, a piss break for uh, yeah, for, for most fans, match, you know? Though. So Christopher Brown says, two quick things, Ryan. I guess you can take it then if he's talking to you. Go ahead. Um, number one, given that both DirecTV and The Dish have dropped WWE pay-per-views, how long before Vince says, screw it, and yanks Total Divas from the E! Network? They've got nothing to do with pay-per-view providers with, uh, with, you know, I mean, we're talking pay-per-views, you're talking about network television shows, so that's completely, two completely opposite things there. And number two, what does Ryback have to do to get back in WWE's good graces for another face run since his heel run from November 12th to now, in my eyes, has been a dismal failure? Ryback's, uh, listen, there's the, the word on Ryback is that they started to push him and this huge ego went to his head uh, where he thought he was bigger than what he actually was. He went out in media interviews. They weren't happy with the way that he conducted himself there and the way that he was promoting WWE. Um, and they basically said, you want to let the ego go to your head? As fast as we put you up here, we'll bring you right back down here. And that happens with a lot of guys. Uh, where these egos go to their head and WWE sees it. Uh, they think they're bigger than what they are and they need to remember, look, WWE is the one that pushed me to where I am. Don't let, and it happens to people when they go to Hollywood. It happens to big name stars. When guys first come in, they're real respectful to everybody around them and then they get pushed and they think they're better than everybody else and that's what happened to Ryback and they, boom, Call you live on WZR TV. What that? Hey, what's going on, guys? How you doing, man? All right, so a quick three-part question here. First part, I want to ask: Is there any talk about adding a young rookie to Evolution? A young I rookie? I haven't heard any talk about that. I like the idea because the whole point of a faction is to create a star, and all three of those guys are already stars. So what's the point of doing this? Unless the point is to elevate Shield, which I think the point is, that is to elevate Shield, I, I and so. I love that idea. It's very good for them. <laughs> not only that, but uh, Ric Flair is, uh, as of last uh, word, was not uh, scheduled to be. Not that Ric Flair is a rookie by any means, but yeah. uh, he's uh, he's not expected to uh, be, cool be a part of it. cool to have him as a mouthpiece, though. But it I guess would be it cool would, to bring It him would in, take right? away from the focus, which, like we said, is probably really to put to over use the these guys to elevate, or right. ev elevate the shield. And then eventually, I mean, the shield is eventually going to split. I mean, the plan here is to do Roman Reigns against Triple H. We right, put it up on the website Slam, yeah. by uh, SummerSlam. So it's probably going to be Roman Reigns against Triple H at the... SummerSlam pay per view. And they've already started because they, they had they had Rain Spear Triple H, and then they did that the night after WrestleMania, and then last right. this past Monday night they did like a replay of that in slow motion and showed right. it. And then of course the show ends with Triple H having Reigns crawl on pedigree and stand over and right. talk shit. Right, so and they're already planting the seeds to these guys breaking off into their own. Thing. I think I think you'll see Triple H and Roman Reigns, and then eventually you're going to see a tag team match between uh, Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins against uh, Randy Orton, and Dave Batista. And when that, that happens, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because you're going to have you're going to have the two main guys pretty much Triple H the main guy of evolution yeah, if you will the leader. Roman Reigns the pretty much the leader um, of, of both groups face each other and then you'll have a tag team match between uh, kind of the, the the leftover guys if if you will you know what I mean anything else bro uh, I'm gonna combine these two into one first one uh, the thing that AJ Lee is it possible that she might have just quit and nobody even knows about it and um is, is it possible that CM Punk is going to get the itch to actually come back? You know, everybody seems to get the itch to come back at, uh, at, at, at some point. Um, I just think CM Punk, as of right now, he is completely... He is done. But that's not to say that a year or two from now, CM Punk may say, All right, enough is enough. I'm going to come back. He's and, not an and, old guy. You're going to see him again. Uh, you're going to see CM Punk but back. But it seems like it ain't going to be anytime soon. I don't think it's going to uh, be anytime soon. I agree with that. But what I do think you think about this? AJ Lee may have quit. Nobody knows. I don't think AJ yeah, Lee's think quit. I think she's simply taping, taking time off. I mean, she, she just, loves wrestling. She loves yeah. pro wrestling. I mean, there's all those but videos that, when she was first coming so in. So CM Punk, you know. Well, yeah, I, I think CM Punk's going to take an extended break. Like Boone said, I eventually expect to see him back in uh, in WWE, but not anytime soon. Um, and then as far as uh, AJ Lee, I think she's just, you know, taking a break uh, for, for right now. 
Jay Mullen says, how about that tribute video package on Raw for Ultimate Warrior this Monday? Brought a tear to my eye. It was awesome and very fitting. I noticed last night you guys were discussing why DDP was chosen to appear on Nancy Grace's show. I found it interesting because during Warrior's Hall of Fame speech, he plugged DDP yoga big time. Literally, the first thing he said, and that's going to start... Do- Did he? And that he's going to start doing it. So I think they were perhaps close outside of the ring, maybe? Question mark? Um, yeah, Warrior did plug DDP Yoga did he? in his speech. I remember that. I don't Was it the first thing he said? I don't know. But I know he... Yeah, I think it was, actually. Uh, so maybe they were close. I don't know. Huh. It's possible, I don't know. yeah. I don't know the guy, so... Jose Luis. Luis, uh, is TNA stock worth buying now that it's at its lowest? TNA doesn't have stock, yeah, they say you can I don't do believe. If you want TNA doesn't uh, doesn't have stock. Yeah, yeah there you go, the, uh, Ryan Ennis. <laughs> Paul Velasquez. Oh yeah, he tells him you better you're better off with a cheeseburger roll. Because yeah, <laughs> even if they did have stock, I wouldn't buy. It. They're uh, they're not on the uh, on the stock market. They don't have a. Uh, Brock Flucker has a very very interesting question. What's your favorite color this week? What is your favorite color? Um, my favorite color is blue. That's my favorite. Color. <laughs> I used to say, blue's my favorite color. Oh, come on. Word to your mother. We got the Red Hot Deals. That's Smoking Red, smoke right. Red Hot Deals. <laughs> Red Hot Deals. Oh, God. That's an inside joke. All right. Yeah. Favorite color is blue. Blue? Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> Tom Nelson. Tom Nelson. Well, WWE have Ric Flair in Evolution. As of uh, right now, no plans to uh, have him in, in Evolution. Oh, you really cracked up over there. Huh? Oh, I remember that guy. All right. The uh, next guy in the... Oh, shit. Some more came in. All right. Shouldn't have done oh. that, man. We left off with who? Tom Nelson. So Vincent Nugent, a.k.a. Acer. Oh, boy. Here, here we go. It's not, it's that, not bad. that bad this week. There's a couple here that are, though. But anyway, All right. He's got a bunch more. Did Did you guys watch the Manny Pacquiao? He says, did you guys watch the Manny Pacquiao and Timothy Bradley 2 fight sure any event did. from the HBO pay-per-view event? Wow. From this past Saturday. If so, what, drunk Acer? what were your thoughts on them? The, like, what, What's the difference between one and the other? The fight those, and the event? Those fights. What were your, so thoughts, what on were your those fights? thoughts on them? Oh, the fights, I guess. The fight was uh, Timothy Bradley and Manny Pacquiao. I'll say this, though. Manny Pacquiao won that fight. It wasn't that great of a fight. And it's not the same Manny Pacquiao that I'm used to, no. man. If Manny was to get in the ring, I said a year or two ago that Manny Pacquiao would... would pro- I, I said yeah. that I would bet money on Manny Pacquiao to take out Floyd Mayweather. Now, I knew that I was probably going to be wrong, but... I would have picked you Manny didn't Pacquiao. Like you thought you were wrong then. You're but wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I would have put money on Manny Pacquiao, so I thought that he had a chance to beat Floyd. After seeing the last couple of fights with Manny Pacquiao, it's not the same Manny Pacquiao from a couple of years. I think he's more in the politics, I'll man. tell you right now, you give me the best Manny Pacquiao versus any version of Floyd Mayweather Jr., I'm going with Floyd Mayweather Jr. Right. Styles make fights. Yeah. Mayweather would have smoked him at any point in time. Calling it live on WZR TV. What's up? Isn't Cuddle Divas the, the greatest show you've ever seen? Oh, it's fucking amazing, bro. What is it? I love it. <laughs> love it, bro. Love it. <laughs> Total Divas. I like the show. It's the, Dude, it's the most scripted television program. I get I've into been. it, man. It's worse than the Kardashians. It's worse than any reality show I on watch TV. watch reality shows. Brutal, man. But I like it. I, I, I can admit that. I like well, it. Well, Boone loves it. I, is it the best show? No, but it's, I watch it. I'm not a bad... You know. I watch it. You know what? I, I'll agree with Boone. It's addicting, man. It's addicting because Addictive, they yeah. get you, they get you, they get you tied in, and they try to make you believe. But you can see right through it. You can see. I the just things like the little. Clearly, yeah, you can see through the the fake scripting stuff. But I like the little glimpses behind the curtain. It's such a right. All right. It, now, if this show was ten years ago, it'd be fucking revolutionary because you weren't you were the, the business was much more protected. You weren't allowed to see a lot. Right. Right. You know, right. Except for like behind the beyond the mat and stuff like that was the first times you really got to see stuff like that. Now it's kind of commonplace, but at the same time, I still dig it, you know, so. Dig it. What do you think of Total Divas? Yeah, it's fucking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the call, bro. I appreciate it, man. All right, back to uh, Rapid Fire. We've got Runji. Ah, uh, Fabricio Verdum against Travis Brown this Sunday. Who you got? This is UFC right now. Michael Bisping's uh, That's fighting. Tonight, yeah. UFC on Fox. I got uh, Verdun. I'll go. 
Let me get this. Let mm, me get this. That's a tough one. Yeah. That's a tough one. Let me get them both back to back because you do it better than me. Okay. Ranjit! Ranjit! Fabricio! Fabricio! <laughs> but, uh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm going to go with Travis Brown. Travis Brown? Really? But I, I really. Uh, really? I'm going to go with Travis Brown. All right. He no shocked doubt. me with Josh Barnett. He handled him. Carl, you're live on WZR TV. What's up? What's going on, Ryan? What's going on, Matt? How you doing, man? What's up, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. I didn't know you guys were doing this show today, so my apologies for coming on late. Um, so if you talked about it already, um, but what did you guys think about, um, I don't need the whole thing, but Raw was just like the biggest letdown for me on Monday coming off of the one after WrestleMania. It was just like the one after the WrestleMania, like I was into like the whole show, like so many things were happening, like, wow, this is awesome. And then this past Monday was like, oh my God, are you kidding me? To me, it was just like horrible. Like, I mean, and I know it's expecting a lot because it's the one after WrestleMania, but like, what are your guys' thoughts? We already talked about that, dude. What are you talking about? No, nah, I'm you're an <laughs> asshole, man. No, no, yeah, he's got. A joke. We did talk about it, but I'll, I'll say it again. I, it proved to me that when they want to, they can put on a fucking stellar show. So it seems apparent that this past Monday night, we're back to business, buddy. We're back to the basics. We're back to normal. I back agree. to usual. It's time for a fucking three-hour fucking. Uh, regular show where if you're lucky you'll get one moment at the beginning of each hour you know <coughs> if you're lucky and that's it, uh, it but really they're fully capable was. of doing a great show so it's like it, I'm like him I'm like well then why don't they just do that every week and try and top themselves every week because do your no, best show every week there's no competition these days man. they should compete you know with I mean? themselves they should compete with themselves but when there's no competition they're not forced it's easy. to they're not forced to yeah. and they feel like well we're the top dog in the game we can do so whatever we want we can do exactly yeah. we can do whatever they want thanks for the call dude I appreciate it man I was just joking with you <laughs> um let's see uh, right here's you Anthony Remy when will Mike, Mitt, Mike, Mike, Rock who? Burns, Rock Burns, Rock get Burns. called up to the main roster. Ooh. That must be an. I don't know NXT, who the hell that is. So. NXT guy, yeah. I've never heard anything uh, about a Mike Rock Burns, Burns. So not sure, man. NXT guy. Vincent Nugent says, "Did you guys enjoy the entire Ultimate Fighter Nations overall?" And there's the Tough Nations finale event going on right now. Check it out when you guys got the time. Did you like the card? I event? saw the uh, I saw the prelim fights earlier. I had them on when you walked in. That's what was playing on my computer. Okay. Uh, some of the prelims were okay. There was one nasty knockout. I can't remember the name though, dude. It was Jobbers. You know, it was yeah. Pretty it was, much the jobbers. card wasn't the card tonight. I didn't watch the series. This is the one of the first uh, Ultimate Fight. Not the first, but. One of like only three or four seasons that I didn't even yeah. bother with, but it, it was not really a U.S. show. Like right. when Frankie Edgar and B.J. Pango, I'm gonna watch that. I've been watching every episode of the Brazilian one. I know with uh, Vitor and uh, or no, Vandalay and, and uh, Chael. And yeah, this yeah. past Sunday was the big fight episode. And oh. It was it was kind of of a letdown. Yeah, I mean, it, it seemed real scripted. It wasn't man. as no, no. massive as they made it sound. I mean, it, pretty much what they showed in the preview. You got to stop. He pushes them. <laughs> Barely swings, chill, ducks, takes him down. That was pretty much it. Right. Once they right. hit the ground, the other coach, uh, Andre Dita, the uh, Vanderlei Silva assistant coach, came in, started fucking sucker punching chill, and then yeah. it was broken up, and that was it. it so you pretty much really saw it all in that little video preview that they were man. advertising. But uh, scripted. the card tonight, it's like a mm, Michael Bisping's fighting Tim Kennedy in the main event. That's right. a fight I'll probably download and check out. Kyle Noak uh, against Patrick Cote. I could give two shits. Uh, the Ultimate Fighter finales fights. Uh, I could give a shit. Why do people say I could give two shits? Why not three shits or four shits? Why is it? Why you know, if shits? I hated it even more, I might even say, yeah. I, not only do I give two shits, I don't give three shits. Or you could say like I hated it times two. You know, my big thing is I hate when people say I'm gonna give 110 percent. You know what? That I doesn't hate? exist. 100 percent is as high as we can go. You know what I hate? People say, well, let me address the 800 pound elephant in the room. Yeah. Why isn't there a 789 pound elephant? There ain't no elephant in the room. There's no elephant in the fucking room. What are you talking about? Metaphorically speaking. Metaphorically speaking. But if you're going to, as long as we're on the metaphor kick, why has it got to be an 800 pound elephant? Isn't a, isn't a baby elephant Maybe about 812 pounds? pounds? I don't know. I think a baby elephant's like 800 pounds. Is it? I think so. I'll kick an elephant's ass in two seconds. You're not kicking an elephant's ass. I'll beat the shit out of an elephant. No, no, no. Arturo Velasquez Jr. says, Will John Cena turn heel and join the Wyatt family? John Cena's never turning heel. John Cena's going to continue this gimmick of you can love me, you can hate me, and that's 
just gonna Hustle, be him. loyalty, and respect. That's gonna be him. Uh, I, I won't say he'll never turn heel, but he's not turning heel now and joining the White Family. No, I don't see that. Whoa, what is it? An elephant. I don't know. An elephant. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Vincent Nugent. What do you guys think about James Storm, Gunner, and Robbie E uh, for re-signing multi-year deals with TNA? According to Big John Gaborik, is that a good thing or a bad thing for TNA? Listen, it's a who cares? Thing. I am gonna. I, I will take Sorry. all the heat in the world. Okay. Yeah. I, Robbie E. You can say. Mm. Listen. Listen. That's right. You like. We're gonna, we're gonna end on this, man. <laughs> Robbie E is. I get it. I get it. Okay, the gimmick is based off a Jersey Shore. It's a knockoff of the Jersey Shore. He's got the greaser gimmick. He's what's up, bro? And he's doing greaser. the dude and the bro. Yeah, he's a little got bit the, offended. By he's that. got the greasy hair. Part Italian. Man. It's a you know, kind of offensive. Greaser. There was a there was a, a movie made called Grease. Yeah. Right, and they were all greasy. Yeah. yeah that was a 70s. It's not a racism thing. Grease. It was a 70s movie, and racism was more rampant back it then. It wasn't more rampant. Oh, it yeah, was yeah, now. Yeah. No, stuff like, shit, terms like that were more You're offended because I used the term greaser? Of all people that are going to be offended. I said a little bit This guy. <laughs> he said a little bit. I'm not going to lose any sleep tonight, but it's kind of a dickhead thing to say greaser. Oh, my. We have heard you come on here and you use the what? term retard and, and well, but, People are probably offended by that. If you're offended, offended by, by the that, term greaser? If you're personally offended by somebody saying you're retard and you're not retarded, or if you don't have a retarded person in your family, then you're a fucking idiot. And I don't like you. I remember one time, this guy, it was during Shark Week or something, and I, and I put a Facebook <laughs> post, and I said, who gives a shit about sharks with Shark Week? He was legitimately offended and responded like, how dare you? And I said, you know what, dude? You're a dumb person. I don't like you. I don't want to know you, and you're blocked. And I think that's the only person in history I've ever blocked on Facebook. This is my personal Facebook. I knew the guy. He said, how could you say that about sharks? I said, are you kidding? He said, no, how could you talk bad about sharks, this and that? I said, okay, here's the situation. You're a dumb guy. You're a, we've heard of you. You're one mm -hmm. of those real-life dumb guys we hear about. <laughs> you're a professional stupid person. I don't like you. And you're blocked. And I didn't get the fuck out of that was me. it. That was it. That's it. True story. That's it for this show. That's it. We got a lot of work to do tonight. Yeah, man. it's not it at all. That's it for this. That's it for this, yeah. and uh, then we got to get out of here. We got a uh, we got a lot of news coming up on the website. I'm telling you, it's gonna be a uh, it's gonna be a busy night. Thanks to everybody that came out on uh, tonight Wednesday night. Uh, a lot of people showed up in the chat room. So they all came out, man. They, they came, came around. Yes. They came around. Uh, so a lot of stuff coming up on the main websites, guys. We're going to get out of here. Lots of news coming up on the website. We'll see you guys next Tuesday night, 8 to 10 Eastern Time, WZROnline.com for this greaser right here, Matt Boone. That's me. <laughs> That's you, all right. I guess I'm a greaser. <laughs> this is Ryan Clark. That's him. Pimp Daddy. Yeah. We'll see you next Tuesday night, 8 to 10 Eastern Time on WZROnline.com. Dot com. Both.